I have been waiting for a machine that challenges the norm as much as the Magneto X has. And, well, we have a beta unit. So, let's talk about the machine, some of the things we're up against for the beta test, and, well, my experiences so far. Let's get into it. This machine challenges the norm for motion systems with 3D printers. In a motion system called MagXY by PO Poly, they are utilizing magnetic linear drives in the X and Y axes. So that means no belts, no pulleys, no traditional stepper motors. In fact, this is effectively a really big brushless DC motor, or a BLDC. Instead of having the magnets around the actual motor core itself, they've just laid them out across the printer itself. That means that you get real closed loop movement. So skip steps, thing of the past. And you also get a metric buttload of torque. These motors are some of the most powerful motors that I've ever seen, especially the one for the X-axis, or is it the Y? We're gonna talk about that, the, the, the long axis here. But they're claiming movement precision of three microns. And thanks to my buddies over at Ember Prototypes, we have one of their super awesome cameras that we are gonna be using to tune in the old Prusa XL behind me, but we're also going to check that claim of three micron accuracy. So if you guys want to see us do it live, make sure that you get subscribed and leave a like while you're at it. And if you do want to support the efforts that we do, like going through a fair bit of testing and showing you guys the first look at printers out there, hey, support us for a couple of bucks via all the links in the description down below. And at the $10 tier and higher, get to come hang out with us on our private Discord server. Eh, but enough of the sales pitch. If you want to, you will. This thing is honestly an engineering marvel to me. It looks like there were very few corners cut here when it comes to actually building it. The magnetic linear drive system uses magnets that are so thick, I can just drop a hex key on it and the damn thing stands, well, at full attention. But it goes beyond just this magnetic linear drive. There is more to this printer than just the magnetic drive. We have a big tree tech octopus underneath the hood, of course, completely custom drivers for the XY motion system, but four individually controlled Z-axis stepper motors, which allow for quad gantry leveling, basically giving you a damn perfect first layer, thanks in part to the load cell that they have inside of the hot end itself, allowing you to use the nozzle to boop the build plate to get that perfect first layer. And outside of a little bit of tweaking when it comes to the Z offset, we have seen beautiful first layers on this machine. They're claiming max print speed of 800 millimeters a second, which we have not been able to fully test that yet because um, we have the medium boy in there, we got the long boy, and we're gonna go with the perfectly normal boy here as well. We've not adjusted the hot ends yet because yeah, um, this machine comes with not one, not two, but three, count them, three hot ends in the box and that might be an option we're not 100 percent sure if that's just going to be provided to everybody or if you had to choose this one has the medium one or the normal one i don't judge how you say it to yourselves but we're seeing travel speeds claimed at 1500 millimeters a second which it can do without a problem in fact it can travel much faster than that but claimed 1500 millimeters a second and maximum acceleration of 22,000 millimeters per second squared which it could do more of, it, it, it can go above that, but manufacturer specs 22,000 millimeters per second squared. It is fun to test the limits of this machine, and that is part of what a good beta test does. We go and try to find the little problems and things that make this, well, not immediately perfect. Things like, we don't yet have pressure advance enabled on this machine, and the thermistor isn't exactly reading the right temperature, so we have to play the fun little offset game, and the drivers don't reset properly, so if you accidentally hit a driver and it skips a step for some reason, it will completely fail out the print with no way to restart it other than rebooting the machine. But what we're noticing here, there's a trend. It's software. The hardware of this machine is pretty much bang on 
what I would want to see. In fact, they're utilizing very few 3D printed parts. We've got a carbon fiber composite part up here, and then we have powdered nylon cover for what is truly, in my opinion, a bit rude because the engineering done on the inside of this tool head is beautiful. And we have powdered nylon fan ducts, which are absolutely amazing. I wish more companies would do that kind of thing. Companies, please do that. FDM is okay, but it's not great. We want powdered nylon, MJF, SLS. And if you guys want to learn more about those more professional grade technologies, let me know down in those comments and we'll set up some videos of it because I know Know quite a bit about that world and we don't talk about it all that much here but if you do want to know what a quarter million dollars buys you there's a lot but you're also missing quite a bit of the market as well the thing to note about this is that the magneto x is the first 3d printer under a hundred thousand dollars that we are aware of that uses magnetic linear drives and that's what makes it so unique something to note about the linear motors as well specifically on the long axis which i don't know what we're going to call x or y but technically there's only one linear drive for the y-axis and the other side is just a idler but the idler is a big beefy linear guideway so it's not like you're going to have an issue with it racking but it is only driven from one side the x-axis has a linear guideway on the bottom of it which helps keep everything aligned as well but man these things are quiet when they're just running without the fan as soon as you turn that fan on though oh she gets real loud <laughs> that's kind of what i like about this machine it is proud to be over-engineered and that is certainly the good definition of this machine it is over-engineered for the price and certainly if it can deliver on all the promises that have been made this will likely be one of the best 3d printers for the money out there it's like you told some engineers hey build me a 3d printer xy motion system and they said well what would you like and the boss said i don't care have fun this is what they come up with. It's like you took engineers from Pantheon, the people that make the HS3, the 3D printer that uses ball screws and servos, and you put them onto this, but said we need it to be a reasonable price. You might say grant $2,000 is a ton of money and with some accessories, call it 2,500, right? You're gonna want the enclosure. You don't need the extra part cooling. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. But at 2,500-ish dollars, when this thing is all said and done, assuming it can hit all the claims that Pio Poly has and produce beautiful prints, this could potentially be one of the best business class machines out there. For those of you that are looking to start a print farm, I'd have my eyes on this machine and be watching exactly what, well, beta testers like us say about it. Something to note about this machine is it breaks the traditional square bed and instead opts for a rectangular build plate. So it is only 300 millimeters deep, but it is 400 millimeters wide with 300 millimeters in the Z or Z axis. This allows you to have those larger parts like helmets for big stupid heads like mine or parts where you might just need a little bit of extra room. In fact, we have parts that we do for clients relatively often where 300 is not enough and we need closer to about 330, 340. And with 400 in one dimension, it perfectly covers what we need. And it means that for those larger parts where you're charging for them, you can easily make back your investment pretty quickly on a machine like this. Now, something to note is that under these covers are some thick, and that's thick with at least three C's, neodymium or neodymium magnets. We don't yet know what that looks like for people with implanted medical devices. So if you have something like a pacemaker, please be careful. We don't know how this is going to affect those devices. Just something to be aware of. If you, your loved ones, or anybody that you know that could be in relatively close proximity to this machine has a sensitive medical device, this could potentially hurt it. So just please be careful there. But the vast majority of you, that doesn't apply, so it's no big deal. We're gonna go into some of the gripes that I have ab about this machine because I think it's important that we talk about the good and the bad with the biggest and most obvious problem for me is this stupid filament system. It should be reverse Bowden and Peel Poly is aware of this and they have already started to make adjustments there. The other one for me is an odd one. It's the heat bed. It is 1000 watts and for most Users, a thousand watts is well over 50% of the power that their wall outlet can provide. So if you have more than one of these on an outlet and they're starting up at the same time, 
you're gonna trip a breaker. And as some of the beta testers have found out, your UPSs, like your 1000 volt amp UPSs that most people use on machines like this, they are not adequate to handle it and they'll yell at you. There are ways to silence those alarms, eh, some more permanent than others, but it is still something that you should take into account. But the machine does have a pretty loud internal fan. This is to deal with the Raspberry Pi, which is more of a rock pie, if I'm correct, as well as the Big Tree Tech Octopus to keep all the power supplies and things in there cool. Yes, I said power supplies with an S at the end, because there is both a 24 volt and a 48 volt power supply in this machine. I'm assuming that's for steppers and things like that, but the big power boy here is this print bed. Now, we have already turned ours down. We've just gone into Clipper, which, oh yeah, it's Bonestock Clipper. I got, I'm excited about that. We're going to talk about that too. But I've already gone into Clipper and just changed its PWM frequency to run at about 75%. So instead of a thousand watts, I'm getting closer to 750, which is fine. I don't need the print bed to heat up from ambient to 50C in less than 60 seconds. It does not matter to me. And if you are running a ship that is that tight, I highly recommend you look at raising your prices. But that is another video for another day. And a podcast topic, which we'll card to. We've done a few of them. So we'll card to the most recent and we'll link to all the ones that we've done in the description down below if that's something that you want to hear more about. But I will say certainly looking at the build plate, it's pretty awesome. Now it is magnetic and flexible like you would expect, but it is not dual-sided PEI. We have a textured PEI on one side and a PEO. I think it's PEO. I'm honestly not certain what they call these things these days. Personally, I prefer two sheets of PEI, but you know what? There are plenty of manufacturers out there that will assumingly make third-party build plates for this machine, so I'm not really concerned about that. So now let's talk about the software. It's Clipper. It's bone stock Clipper. There's a few small changes done to it, but the thing that I like the most is that it's not one of these like custom clippers where everything that's important is actually removed and questionable security. I'm going to read directly from P.O. Poly's website regarding their privacy policy and how they look at this machine. I'd like to believe that we influence this quite a bit. And so Mark, I'm gonna tip my proverbial hat to you, sir, because thank you for actually listening to users. Your privacy, our priority. In an industry where cloud-based operations and encrypted logs, yeah, are increasingly the norm, P.O. Poly Magneto X stands apart. We firmly believe your printer should be entirely your own. No forced cloud usage, no hidden data collection, and certainly no overbearing user agreements that claim rights over your creations. With Magneto X, you are free to print, upgrade, and innovate without worry. Your creativity, your data, your privacy. We're committed to ensuring they remain in your hands. I love that. I will tell you, there was no policy that I had to agree to to use this machine. There was no paperwork that I had to sign when getting this machine in. There was no agreement that I had to state and sign away my life that would take me hours to read and understand. It just showed up. And it uses Bonestock Clipper with Mainsail and Crow's Nest and everything that you would expect Bonestock Clipper to have. And as someone that's never used Clipper, someone who has been incredibly nervous about using Clipper, my God, it is amazing. To be able to just adjust the PWM frequency of my build plate and then not have to recompile the firmware is absolutely amazing. So Clipper peeps, all right, I waited way too damn long, I'm sorry. And if you wanna see more Clipper on this channel, let me know in those comments below. This is a company that notices that their target market is not going to be end consumers, right? The average consumer is not going to spend $2,000 on a 3D printer like this. The, the same way that the average consumer will complain about an $800 Prusa or a $1,200 Bamboo, but they will easily be able to shell out the money for a $200 Creality clone of some sort. This machine is not for the $200 Ender users. This machine is for those that are prosumers, and quite frankly, this could even go up to the light industrial market. With the additional chamber on it, you can easily get really, really nice temperatures in here, especially if you keep that bed at a thousand watts. Boy, howdy, that's one hell of a chamber heater if I've ever seen one. Where we've had not the best experience with the prints on it. I have a lot of issues with build plate adhesion, and that has a lot to do with the temperature fluctuations and the humidity fluctuations that we have here in my garage in Florida. I'm sorry, but it is life. We are still dealing with some issues regarding pressure advance. We are still not able 
to calibrate the input shaping on this machine because the way that Clipper does it is not exactly the way that these linear motors are going to want it done. Again, a lot of the issues that we see with this machine so far are software based if they're not immediately my fault. And that means that it's easily fixable because otherwise this machine, she's pretty bulletproof. Like honestly, it weighs like 25 kilos. It's a really heavy machine with probably three to four millimeter thick aluminum extrusions all over. And I love a good fillet. And I know those of you that get triggered by that. And I will say this is one of the quietest 3D printers that I have ever used until you turn the fans on. The, the main cooling fans for this machine that cool the part are 13,000 RPM, 40 15 so that's 40 millimeters in diameter, 15 millimeters thick, ball bearing fans. And their main hot end heat sink cooling fan is an 8,000 RPM, 30, 10 millimeter ball bearing fan, which that would normally be the loud one. But these fans are so bloody loud and they're incredibly powerful. I actually don't think you will need that curtain air system that they sell with it. Mine doesn't have it. And quite frankly, I have not yet needed. In fact, I have been turning down the fans because they're that efficient. That's not normally something that you hear in printers like this. Mind you, it's got one of the biggest tool heads of any printer that I've used in a long time, especially for the amount of speed that it can move. But that comes down to the fact that these linear drives have a ton of torque behind them. You don't wanna get hit by this printer. It will hurt you. Keep kids and pets away from it, please. And because there is a load cell on the hot end carriage, it can do a 48 point auto bed leveling routine to give you a perfectly flat first layer that outside of some slight adjustments for Z offset, we have seen beautiful first layer prints out of this machine. And this is something that I never knew that I needed until I had it, but it's got built in buttons on the top of the machine that run the load and unload macros inside a clipper. And theoretically they're totally programmable, which is, Super freaking cool. Now, I do wish that they would command the machine to heat up to a certain temperature, then feed the filament in, but that is all things that you can adjust, which is what I love about open source software solutions. In fact, if you wanted to peek through the Magneto X code, it is already available on GitHub. We will link to it in the description down below. I will say that while we have had a lot of challenges and some of them are forgivable, some of these challenges are not forgivable. Like the fact that the hot ends are not reporting the correct temperature. Like your nozzle is 20 to 30 C above what we're expecting. Well, we know why it's occurring now and we can work to solve it. It's likely a fairly linear thing. So don't be afraid. We've already tested thermal runaway. It works perfectly. This machine operates the way that we expect its thermistor is just further away from the nozzle than you would traditionally expect one to be. But because it does use a standard M6 threaded nozzle and it appears to be volcano length, this gives you lots of options out there, including the hardened nozzle that it comes with, or, you know, if you're feeling a little fancy, get yourself a diamond and toss it on there. Maybe we'll do that in an upcoming video. Stay tuned. But right now, part of the beta test is to use and, well, abuse these printers to quite literally test their limits and see what would happen during a traditional use case scenario, whether it is in a print farm, like what we would use it for, or if it's more of a hobbyist and wants to just print big parts really freaking fast, because this thing is an absolute speed demon, quite literally the fastest printer I have ever used, and we have yet to hit limitations. And I think once we can really get things like the input shaper dialed in and pressure advance dialed in, we could really look at unlocking the speed. It's like adding a bottle of nitrous to a car. And the nice thing is, if we do happen to toss a piston through the engine, you just have to reset the printer. Currently, there are two buttons down here at the bottom of the machine. You'll see some LED lights. When you do overload the linear drives on your left will go red. You should be able to hit that button down there to reset it. That does not currently work. You have to power cycle the machine. I will tell you, it's not that easy to make this machine actually skip a step if you will. And of course, having the beautiful seven inch touchscreen on the front means that you have pretty much every availability that you need to make this machine work for your needs. It's got Wi-Fi built in. You can control it directly from Orca Slicer where profiles are available, which is super awesome if you wanted to mess around. The nightly build, 
has some in there if you wanted to take a look at the Magneto X inside of Orca Slicer. But I will tell you, this machine has a lot of potential, but right now, we're still working out the kinks. It looks like the Magneto Xs are set to ship sometime in April of 2024 based on the most recent communications from PO Poly, but of course, that date is subject to change. There are a lot of things that are more software-based that I would really prefer C to be adjusted and fixed before this machine goes fully public. But from what I'm told, I have one of the later beta units that is much closer to what the end product will be to you, the folks at home. There are some odd things that are missing, like there are no magnets for the doors and things like that, but those are relatively simple for me to add as part of the beta program. Those would need to be added in for you at home. I will say certainly, just from playing around with this machine, I do highly recommend that you do add on that extra enclosure. I know that you might not need it, but I think it is better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. You can always take the top hat off of the machine, just leave the front doors on. But do note, because this is a big tree tech octopus, you will probably want to add some lighting and you have tons of extra IO available on that board if you did want to go ahead and add it with, of course, full control via the screen and clipper. I've really been enjoying this machine, even though it has been giving me a lot of challenges when it comes to printing properly. But that's part of a beta test program things are not always going to go right. I would love to know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below in those comments of what your favorite thing or most anticipated thing about this machine is. For me personally, I was really excited to see the entire extruder assembly for the machine, not knowing that it wasn't going to be an off-the-shelf component. P.O. Poly actually did a ton of custom manufacturing, including a fully custom extruder setup that, in my opinion, does not need to be as lightweight as it actually is. Uh, the planetary gears are actually visible. You can see them, which means little bits of plastic could get in there, which could potentially pose a risk. But it is a very high torque application, which means, well, it can feed filament fast as well. And of course, the custom hot ends are kind of cool. And I like that I can use off-the-shelf nozzles for it. But we don't yet know what these are going to end up costing. Well, the rubber meets the road. Hopefully, individual parts will be available, but we're not exactly certain yet. I will say I do like the single piece heat break that goes all the way down, which is really, really nice. Actual Hot Ed itself uses quite a few bolts to attach to the heat sink, and that's how it sinks the heat through. I think that's a really unique way of doing it. And of course, regular size connectors are always appreciated, with this one using two heaters, because... Oomph. I will say it's been a lot of fun testing this machine and I wish I was able to show this to you guys the day that it arrived in our shop about a month, month and a half ago. But we were under a media embargo. That's how these things kind of go. And now that we can actually talk about it, I want to know what you guys want to see done on the Magneto X. Keep an eye out. We're going to be doing quite a few live streams with this thing. We're going to be testing the ever loving crap out of it. So if there are some fun torture test files that you want to see, let me know down in those comments. We will run this machine like you would traditionally see it being ran in a business. Business. But right now for us, it's not exactly ready for prime time for us as a business. But I have reasonable faith that P.O. Poly is going to get a lot of these kinks worked out, hopefully and theoretically, before they ship out to you guys. Anyways, guys, let me know what questions you have about this machine and we can do a follow-up video or a follow-up live stream where we answer your questions live. Let me know which one you want to see as well. We could do a main channel video or we could just do a live stream. It's up to you all. I do want to give a huge thank you to all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for what you guys do making these videos possible. Remember, if you do want to support the efforts here on the channel and potentially join our fan-only Discord server, you can hit that up at the $10 tier higher links in the description down below where you can get access to seeing this. The moment we could talk about it, I was streaming in our Discord to show everyone what it was about. So you guys got a first, first look. But right below me will be the most recent interview that I had with Mark from P.O. Poly. I believe that was back at 3D Printopia, which we are excited to go to this year as well. Right next to that will be the one from the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival, which is just around the corner. Let me know down in those comments if you're going. And hey, if you're a company you want to sponsor us, we're, we're looking for sponsors. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Water, fire, air, and dirt. F***ing magnets. How do they work?